Now we will see how to reassemble the pistons. Refer to the Warner Installation and Service Manual or the website www.hydra-cell.com for arrangement of parts. Drop a ball into each opening in the bottom of a piston assembly. Insert a retaining washer and O-ring to hold the ball in place. Insert a valve plunger into a valve cylinder. Slide a spring over the plunger inside the valve cylinder. Insert an O-ring into a spring retainer. Install an O-ring on the spring retainer. Slide the assembled valve cylinder, plunger, and spring into the spring retainer. Slide the complete cylinder and retainer assembly into the piston assembly. Insert a return spring into the piston assembly. Repeat the above procedure for the other two pistons. Place the cylinder housing face down on a flat surface. Insert the assembled pistons into the cylinder housing. Look into the four holes in the rear of the pistons to make sure that the four check balls are properly seated into each of the holes. Now we will see how to reassemble the pump housing and cylinder housing. Please note, inspect the shaft seals before continuing. If they look damaged in any way, replace them. Remove by pounding them out from inside the pump housing. Both seals should be replaced at the same time. Clean the seal bore in the housing using emery cloth or Scotch-Brite. Using the shaft seal protector from the tool kit, install the cam assembly through the pump housing. Install the shaft rotator from the Warner tool kit to hold the cam assembly in place while reinstalling the cylinder housing. For pump housings with bolt and nut style, install the cylinder housing onto the pump housing. Make sure that all holes are properly aligned. Install the assembly bolts from the tool kit through the cylinder housing and pump housing. Alternately tighten down the nuts on the assembly bolts to draw the pump housing and cylinder housing together by compressing the piston return springs. Please note, the pilot bearing on the cam assembly must be properly nested in the bearing race during assembly. If misaligned, the bearing will be damaged and the pump will fail within the first hours of operation. While tightening the nuts on the assembly bolts, continue to periodically turn the pump shaft to make sure that the cam assembly bearings are not binding. If they are binding, loosen the nuts and realign the components. When the pump housing and the cylinder housing are drawn together, install the four socket head cap screws in the rear of the housing. Remove the assembly bolts. For threaded pump housings, install the cylinder housing onto the pump housing. Make sure that all holes are properly aligned. Install the assembly bolts from the tool kit through the cylinder housing and into threaded holes in the pump housing. 
Alternately tighten down the nuts on the assembly bolts to draw the pump housing and cylinder housing together by compressing the piston return springs. Please note, the pilot bearing on the cam assembly must be properly nested in the bearing race during assembly. If misaligned, the bearing will be damaged and the pump will fail within the first hours of operation. While tightening the nuts on the assembly bolts, continue to periodically turn the pump shaft to make sure that cam assembly bearings are not binding. If they are binding, loosen the nuts and realign the components. When the pump housing and cylinder housing are drawn together, Install the four socket head cap screws in the rear of the housing. Remove the assembly bolts. Remove the shaft rotator. Now we will see how to adjust the camshaft end play. You may want to review the Warner Hydrocell Pump Installation and Service Manual to see the arrangement of the parts. The current manuals are available online at warnereng.com. If the three set screws are in the cylinder housing, remove and clean them. Insert the center bolt into the hole in the center of the cylinder housing. Turn the center bolt in to move the bearing adjusting plate and cup tight against the bearing cone in the hydraulic end of the pump. Back out the center bolt two full turns. Then turn it back in again until it is snug against the adjusting plate. Back out the center bolt exactly one-fourth of a turn. With a plastic mallet or a regular mallet and a wooden board to prevent damage to the shaft end, strike the end of the shaft solidly three or four times. This will provide about 0 .006 inches or 0.15 millimeters end play in the shaft. This end play of the cam assembly bearings prevents premature bearing failure. Remove the center bolt. Apply removable thread locker to the threads of the three cleaned set screws. Screw the three set screws into the cylinder housing until they contact the bearing adjusting plate. Now we will see how to install the plungers. Please note, if the plungers have been removed from the valve plungers, it is recommended that you do not reuse them. Install new ones instead. Rotate the pump shaft so the piston is in the top dead center position. Place a plunger on the exposed screw end of the plunger guide tool from the water tool kit. The large diameter side of the plunger should face the tool. Screw the guide with the plunger into the valve plunger until tight. Hold the top bolt of the tool. Turn the bottom nut down to force the plunger to seat on the valve plunger.
This is a press fit. When installed, the plunger should be tight against the shoulder of the valve plunger. Repeat this process on the other valve plungers. Install the diaphragms as described in the Install Diaphragms section of this video. Install the fluid end of the pump and prime the hydraulic cells as described in the Fluid End Service section of this video. Install the diaphragms as described in the Install Diaphragms section of this video. Install the fluid end of the pump and prime the hydraulic cells as described in the Fluid End Service section of this video. You have now completed service on the Warner Hydrocell HG25 pump. For further assistance, please see the troubleshooting section or call Warner directly at 612-332-5681. Visit our websites, warnereng.com or warnerint.com for European customers, or contact the distributor in your area. If you encounter the following problems with your pump, check for these issues. Cavitation. Inadequate fluid supply because inlet line collapsed or clogged, clogged line strainer, inlet line too small or too long, air leak in the inlet line, worn or damaged inlet hose, suction line too long, too many valves and elbows in inlet line, fluid too hot for inlet suction piping system, air entrained in fluid piping system, aeration and turbulence in supply tank, inlet vacuum too high. Symptoms of cavitation, excessive pump valve noise, premature failure of spring or retainer, volume or pressure drop, rough running pump, premature failure of diaphragms, drop in volume or pressure, a drop in volume or pressure can be caused by one or more of the following. Air leak in suction piping. Clogged suction line or suction strainer. Suction line inlet above fluid level in tank. Inadequate fluid supply. Pump not operating at proper RPM. Relief valve bypassing fluid. Worn pump valve parts. Foreign material in inlet or outlet valves. Loss of oil prime in cells because of low oil level. Ruptured diaphragm. Cavitation. Warped manifold from overpressurized system. O-rings forced out of their grooves from overpressurization. Air leak in suction line strainer or gasket. Cracked suction hose. Empty supply tank. Excessive aeration and turbulence in supply tank. Abrasives in the fluid. Valve incompatible with corrosives in the fluid. Pump running too fast. Worn and slipping drive belts. Worn spray nozzles. Pump runs rough. Worn pump valves. Air lock in outlet system. Oil level low. Wrong weight of oil for cold operating temperatures. Change to lighter weight. Cavitation. Air in suction line. Restriction in inlet suction line. Hydraulic cells not primed after changing diaphragm. Foreign material in inlet or outlet valve. Damaged diaphragm. Fatigued or broken valve spring. Premature failure of diaphragm. Frozen pump, punctured by a foreign object, elastomer incompatible with fluid being pumped, pump running too fast, excess pressure, cavitation, water or process fluid in oil reservoir, condensation, ruptured diaphragm, Hydraulic cell not properly primed after diaphragm replacement. Frozen pump. Strong water or process fluid pulsations. Note, small pulsations are normal in single acting pumps with multiple pumping chambers. 
Foreign object lodged in pump valve. Loss of prime in hydraulic cell because of low oil level. Air in suction line. Valve spring broken. Cavitation. Aeration or turbulence in supply tank. Valve wear. Normal wear from high speed operation. Cavitation. Abrasives in the fluid. Valve incompatible with corrosives in the fluid. Pump running too fast. Loss of oil. External seepage. Rupture of diaphragm. Frozen pump. Worn shaft seal. Oil drain piping or fill cap loose. Valve plate and manifold bolts loose. Pump housing porosity. Premature failure of valve spring or retainer. Cavitation. Foreign object in the pump. Pump running too fast. Spring retainer material incompatible with fluid being pumped. Excessive inlet pressure.